Hey guys, welcome back. In this video we're working on the Mark 1 Golf and we have some rust problems just underneath the window so we're going to sort that out. Hi right, guys, welcome back. In this video we're going to work on the Mark 1 Golf. So guys, like I was saying in the intro, we have some rust problems. So I've already taken off the paint just to see how bad was the rust. So you can see it's fairly bad. I've just cleaned that little bit there with a the grinder just to see what would actually happen. So it's only surface for us just here, but it is bubbling up. There is a hole just there where my finger is. Zoom in a bit. So you can see just up here. That's still paint there. So there's another one there and then a little tiny one over there. So what I'm going to do is I'm obviously taking off the wipers. I'll probably take off the bonnet and take out the dash. But the first thing is we're going to take off the windscreen and actually kind of have a visual look of how bad it is. Um, I'm going to try and weld it. And uh, you can see the problem is it's actually pushing out the rubber when the rust is bubbling up. So that's going to be a huge problem. So it looks pretty good there. There's a little bit of a rust just well all the way in there. Same with there, all the way across. So what we're going to do is take out the window first. Okay, now on to removing the window. So what I've done is just use a pick and just pry back the seal back underneath the metal strip. Uh, that's how far I've gotten so far. I'm working my way around. But you can start to feel that the window's starting to move. So that's good. So it should be fairly easy now to take out. So this is a little pick I'm using and all I'm doing is just grabbing it and just shoving it back underneath the metal. So like I was showing there, I'm just pushing back the rubber very gently. Hopefully I'll be able to take the whole window out. So if you want to see someone doing this better than me, check out Trevor Brady. I'll leave the link in the description down below. He takes out the whole window really quickly. Okay, as so you can tell, I'm a bit exhausted by doing this, but I'm just pushing it all the way back. And I just have to give it a shove there. You can hear it all starting to push back now. So what we might be able to do is actually pull it from the outside. Biggest risk, I don't want to jinx it, but I don't want to break the window. So <laughs> there's nothing wrong with this window, I just... I have a replacement seal if I need it, but I don't know if I have the right one. Maybe I have one for a tin top or a different gear or something like that. But uh, this seal is actually pretty good, so I'm going to try and save the seal. And if I can reuse it, I will. If not, I'll just use the other one. Okay, so... Use my little pick and just basically just pushing the rubber back over the metal seal after separating the whole window so you can see it there all moving. So it is ready to come out, hopefully, in one go. Okay, and ta-da! <laughs> the window's out. So I have the window now sitting out of sight, but um, yeah, it came out pretty well. There's a lot of rust there, a lot of rust all here, but then it's okay all the way over there until you get over that bit, that little piece there. But I'm really happy how that's turning out so far. Probably the next thing is to take out the dash or inspect how bad the rust is. Okay, so anyone have any magic cures for rust? Ooh, that's bad. Yeah, so that's quite a big rust hole there. Might as well poke it for this. So I'll be fixing it. So there's a fairly big rust hole. That's not looking much better. You can see it all bubbling up. And then over here as well, which I didn't think was actually bad at all. Because when you look, you can see the seam line here actually looked perfect. It's only inside the window it was actually bad. But we're going to clean up everything and see how good a job we can do. Okay, so just giving it all a little hoover there just to make sure it's all nice and clean. And uh, yeah, I think the <laughs> rust holes have actually just grown bigger. So I took the bonnet off and just gave everything a hoover. Just the window now removed, and we're going to take the dash out next. Okay, and it, just by magic, the dash is removed. So there's two bolts here, two bolts at the far side, one here, one here, this clip, and this clip here. That's really attached to the dash. You do have to take out the heater matrix or the, the controller for the heater matrix, but you just push them down. Make sure all the cabling goes down far enough that it just clears the bottom of the dash when you're lifting it out. So obviously you have to undo all of the plugs and sockets for the different switches and do your dash as well. With the dash you have your speedo. This is for your MFA. There is a two little pin plug. And then the main big one. And the vacuum pipe as well. So that's the dash. These are all the buttons. I think there's more buttons on this side for the lights which are hidden there. That's for your lights and that's pretty much it 
it's all the hidden wiring. Because most important thing is when you're putting it back, obviously this plug here and this plug here, don't forget about them because they just kind of plug into the dash itself rather than actually a switch. But uh, yep, okay, on to the next job. Okay, with the dash out, it makes it a lot easier to work because any debris or any sparks or anything like that won't damage the dash. So onto the rust holes. So I took a wire wheel and just wire wheeled all of it and you can see it's quite badly damaged. So I took it back to, to the good metal just back here and you can see it's flat, and, but anywhere that was bad, it's all gone dimpled. And um, obviously it was damaged here and it was actually quite a lot just here. And uh, it gets worse the more we go over. So here we are on the opposite side. That's the wiper hole. And this is the hole that was beside it. And uh, yeah, it's not looking too good. So you can see my fingers between it. And um, yeah, there's a lot there. But again, I've gone over it with a wire wheel trying to find where does the good metal uh, start and where's the bad metal and how big is the problem. Then we come all the way over here, there's loads of little holes, all on the inside though, because the, the rubber will be sitting up here. So it will be kind of hidden, um, so it won't be too bad, but obviously I will weld it up. I'm just going to try, it's a little bit more difficult to weld it because obviously you're going to cut out the bad bit, weld in the good bit, but it has to be the same level as everything else, so it doesn't stand proud, so when you put the glass in, it doesn't shatter the glass because you don't want a piece sticking out and then like hitting off the glass you want everything at the same level. But we have a slightly different problem. So wire wheeling it and if you're ever wire wheeling anything on a car it's really handy to have a hoover. Just an old hoover just to, just leave it sitting anywhere and just leave it on and any dust that's there it'll just naturally get sucked up even if it's, the hose isn't directly pointed at where the dust is coming from. But anyway um, it's fiberglass, <laughs> so it's steel up to here, and steel up to about here, and then this piece here is all fiberglassed. So obviously whoever painted the car before me, uh, owned the car before me, fiberglassed it. So that was a little bit strange to see, so I wasn't expecting that. So yeah, it's about, probably about that much fiberglass in it. Again, nice big decent hole in it, so uh, yeah. Yeah, so it's probably about that big. Okay, so I'm not really sure what to do. I'll, I'll probably either like cut it out and weld everything in one go, or I'll try and leave it or do something. But it's too late now because I've already made a hole in the fiberglass, so I'll probably have to do something. And also, what I'm planning to do is put that uh, rust converter onto it. It's not hammerite corrust, it's uh, another one called OX converter or OZ or something converter and um, it does kind of the same job I can't find anywhere locally to me that'll sell me corrust and um, I'm not even sure how good a product it actually is maybe it's more hype than anything but what I'm going to do is put the rust converter onto this overnight leave it for maybe 12 hours so where the rust is sitting there's going to be tiny little crevices that are going to be lower than the wire wheel will be able to hit so that's why I'm going to put this rust converter on. Hopefully it'll be able to penetrate down into the deepest of the crevices and convert that rust. So that's what we're going to do and try to get as best we can back to good metal. Right. Okay, as you can see, the rust was quite bad. So I cut it all out, made up my little panel to go in and uh, should fit in there perfectly, just like that. And you can see it follows the contours absolutely perfectly. So that's one made up, and I uh, still have that one to do, that one to do, <laughs> all the way over there. So that's now made up. I'm going to probably try seam weld it in, or else make up all the panels and then seam weld it all in one go. Okay, so here are some photographs of what it looked like before I went near it. Then I gave it a small poke, and you could see the amount of rust that was there. Then I took out the window, cut out my panel, and got ready for welding. And here it is now, all welded in. And it's blended in perfectly. So guys, if you like what you're seeing and you want to help me out, you can do so by buying me a virtual cup of coffee at buymeacoffee.com. Link in the description down below. So guys, well, it's taken a lot longer than I thought it would take, but I am getting through it. So I have the first little piece just here done, and now we're going to work away on the rest of it. But do keep following and you can see hopefully my updates on uh, how I'm getting on and hopefully it'll all look perfect. 
The thing is, when you're welding up these panels, one, you don't want to warp anything, which is very important not to do. And the second thing is, unlike just literally welding a patch panel anywhere else in the car, this lip here that you have to weld, that lip is really important because that's what the seal fits on that holds in your glass. And you don't want to mess that up, so you want to keep the seal and everything perfect, or that lip to take on the rubber seal. So it's taking a lot longer than I originally hoped it would take, but I am working away very slowly at it. So do keep watching, and uh, I'm trying to keep you all updated. And of course, the shameless plug, if you want to sponsor me, if you are any of these big companies that has all these panels, or uh, you want to make me paint or anything, do get in touch, and uh, yeah, keep watching. Thanks, guys.